If you experience chronic tightness on the back side of your hips in the lower pelvic region or mid pelvic region, then you probably have some degree of compression of these pelvic bones back here closing together. This is common in things like piriformis syndrome or with people who feel like their butts are always squeezing and they can't get them to let go. The reason why people experience this type of issue can be very much multifactorial in nature. But oftentimes why this occurs is that we are in this position where the pelvis or the body senses is falling too far forward. So what ends up happening is we grip down here to help pull our pelvis back. And what that does is that creates compression of this back pelvic region right here. But then people have this sensation that their glutes or lower pelvic region is really tight and they can't get it to let go. The piriformis muscle in a standing position has the leverage to close this pelvic outlet right here. The outlet is the bottom of the pelvis. The inlet is the top of the pelvic bowl right here. So when I refer to the outlet, I'm talking about this portion down here. So when we have a contraction of the piriformis muscle, it externally rotates this femur, pulls it out like so, but it also closes this space right here because of the line of pull where it attaches on the sacrum and also the femur. So if this space closes and stays closed, that means we're going to struggle to probably open up that space and create length within that pelvic outlet right there. So if we don't have the variability of pelvic movement and also the ability to internally rotate the femur, then we probably are going to struggle to resolve this long term and stretching might provide some temporary relief, but we're not actually going to see a lot of long term changes in most cases. Part of the solution is yes, we do actually want this space to open up but that's secondary to the ultimate goal, which is to re-educate the piriformis and other posterior pelvic musculature to do its job when necessary in context appropriate situations to allow for this opening and closing of the space. So the piriformis muscle works, but it works when needed. And that way it won't have a reason to get tight and stay tight over time. The primary assessment I use to verify the fact that there is indeed compression or tightness of the muscles back here is an active straight leg raise. Because what we need to do beyond about 45 degrees of an active straight leg raise is create a little bit of that opening of the pelvis on that side of the outlet in particular. If you get stuck below 45 degrees, or if you don't even get all the way up to the goal of around 80 degrees, then that's an indication you probably have some work to do to restore the ability to get that outlet to open up. If you want to learn how to perfectly execute the straight leg raise assessment, you can check out the article I'm writing along with this video in the description, which has more information and a written explanation of what I'm discussing in this video. You can also use this as a retest measure. So if you do one of these exercises, your straight leg raise should improve. And that's an indication you are on the right track. And a lot of these activities are inspired and in modifications from Postural Restoration Institute exercises, just with slight modifications to make them more specific to this video. This is the standing supported posterior hip capsule stretch. The purpose of this is to open up the glutes and the hips and the back hip region and allow room for that femur to slide within the hip socket. So to set up for this, we need a table or a box about waist height. We want a one to two inch book underneath our back foot and we want our back toes in line with our front foot mid foot. So what we want to do here is we want to get about, that's about, I would say 10 ish inches away from that box and then bend both knees and then get really heavy on the back heel there. We want to have about 90% of our weight on this back foot here, keeping the whole foot flat, but keeping most of your weight in this heel right here. Very nice. We should be able to feel a whole heel ground. A little bit of Trevor's shoe is off here, but he's still got his whole foot here secure. This is just the back part of the shoe, but his heel is grounded on that book. Now keep feeling your big toe, little toe, but again, most of the weight's back here. Push this right knee forward, but stay heavy on this back heel and push this left knee in. Good, that should allow him to recruit that left inner thigh muscle. 
and now round your back and put your forearms, palms up on that box right there. Very good. So he's really shifted to the left here. And what he should feel is as he keeps that right knee going forward, which is really just going to keep the knee in the same place because he's staying really heavy on this back left heel, this should give him a stretch, this weird sort of bony stretch sensation in his back left pocket. It should not be painful, should not be discomforting, but it should be a different sensation than a muscular stretch, so to speak. So what we're gonna feel here as we exhale is a little tiny bit of side bend to the left. So he's gonna feel his left abs upon the full exhale. Hold that tension as you inhale through your nose. He's gonna expand his right side here. And he's just gonna sit in this position, making sure he's still staying really heavy on his back left heel making sure the right knee is trying to go slightly forward, but we're staying heavy back here. He's feeling that stretch in his back left hip, left inner groin is a little bit on, and so are the left abs a little bit with the exhale. If he can maintain that position and keep this flexion in the back, all is well. This is the TRX supported hip shift squat activity. The purpose of this activity is to train the ability to stay shifted into one hip to drive internal rotation on this back leg right here and turn our pelvis to this side. So to set up for this activity, you want the TRX on something where it's pretty high. It's going to allow you to hold on to those things and offload some of your body weight so that this exercise is easier. You want a book so that your whole foot can be flat on it, and it's about an inch to an inch and a half thick. We don't want the toes to be floating or anything where there's uh, not an ability to keep the whole foot flat, so make sure that the book is long enough as well. So now we've got the weight on the back heel here, but the whole foot stays flat. I'd say about 75 to 80% of his weight is on that back heel on the left here. And then his left toes are in line with his right midfoot. So he has a slightly offset stance, but his feet are still hip width apart. Now, Trevor, unlock both knees for me. And I want you to just tuck your hips. Good, get those hips to rotate back, back, back. And now I want you to push through the inner edge of your arch right here, feeling the ball of the big toe right here, not his actual toe, but the ball right here, and then his inner heel on the right side. He's gonna feel this left outside heel right here. But again, both feet are staying flat. Now push through this right foot right here and have this right foot or this right knee just go slightly forward and the left knee going slightly in. As he does that, he should feel some inner thigh on the left side engage. And now I want him to round his back, really round that back, getting some flexion there. Very nice. You are probably going to lose a little bit of height, but we don't want it to obviously round over too much. You should have a nice curvature right here though. That'll allow you to stay shifted back into this hip without overextending our back, which is what we're trying to educate the body to do. Move through the pelvis, not extend through the low back. Now maintaining that foot pressure on both the right and left foot, Trevor, I want you to keep your right knee going forward, pushing through the right inner edge. Keep your weight in your left heel and the left knee going in. And I want you to exhale and squat down, staying nice and tall, keeping that back rounded. Good, 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 good. He's gonna exhale down until he gets to just below parallel. He's gonna inhale and push through his left heel as he stands up. Very, very nice. And now he's just gonna go through repetitions of that, making sure that that right knee stays forward, left knee stays back and going in. He should feel a ton of left inner groin, some quad on the left, and potentially a slight amount of glute on the right side as he pushes that arch into the ground.
During these exercises, as I mentioned in the actual walkthroughs themselves, you're probably going to feel a very interesting sensation of a stretch, which is unlike any other type of muscular stretch you may have felt in the past. What we're really doing is opening up the space for this pelvis to open in the back outlet, but also we're creating room for this femur to slide back. So what you're really feeling is this femur moving back within the pelvis region right here and the hip socket. And that's exactly what we want to be feeling because that's an indication we are in the right position. If it's painful whatsoever or discomforting beyond the sensation of a mild stretch, then that is an indication you are not ready for this and you should not continue. Some people actually have a really hard time feeling that sensation of the femur moving back, as I mentioned. This was actually me when I first started doing these types of activities. What some people need, it's about 20% of people, they need a slightly different type of hip opener or posterior capsule stretch to allow them to get a little bit more of a push of the femur back in a sideline variation like this. This is the posterior hip capsule stretch. The purpose of this is to open up some space on the downside hip to allow that femur room to glide and roll within the hip socket. To set up for this, we want to be in this sideline position where we have uh, whether a box or a bed or some sort of object where this leg can be resting on top and then you can have this bottom side leg flush against the wall right there. It's really important that it stays flat the entire time. So he's in a straight line from his leg right here all the way up to the top shoulder right here. He's got a towel about an inch or two thick underneath his left side right here, starting at his waist going up to right about nipple line right here. And then he's got a foam roller underneath the left knee right here. And a roller usually is best for this. We don't usually want uh, anything else, but you could use a stack of books. That can work if you have nothing else to use. So Trevor, what I want you to do to set up for this is first, I want you to make sure that you're straight. So he's there, that's good. Now I want you to push your left heel into the wall, keeping everything flat. The whole foot is in contact with that box. And then I want you to tuck your hips, very good. Now, keeping all this in line, I want you to reach your right arm forward, not dropping really far forward, but keeping that in line. And now I want you to roll your right hip over your left, keeping yourself tucked while maintaining foot pressure of the heel into the wall there. He's going to feel a weird sort of bony sensation of a stretch in his bottom side left hip. That's the sensation we're going for, but it should not be painful. Please stop if you experience pain in this position. So what he's gonna do is just exhale all that air out into that position, and he's gonna feel these left obliques engage. That's great, nice soft eight second-ish exhale. He's trying to get all that air out, and he's gonna feel his left obliques. Pause and inhale, he's gonna feel this stretch out right here on the top right side. All the while making sure that this leg is pretty straight, and that left heel's in contact with the wall, and this right hip is slightly rolling over the left. If you don't feel that stretch in your bottom side hip, then there is something you can do to help create that sensation. Some people don't have full hip extension on this back hip right here, so it's gonna be hard for them to keep it in line. You can come forward just a little bit more and then make sure that you don't roll that shoulder forward with it too much. And then do the same thing, tuck, roll the hip over, making sure you're keeping contact of that foot on the wall right there or the box in this instance. If that's you, I recommend starting with this exercise and working your way up from there to the other variations. Over time, it should be much easier to sense the ability to get that opening of the hip and that sensation of the stretch in an upright position. After we have the ability to actually open up that space effectively, I'm a big fan of loading these positions and stressing our tissues to be resilient under stress. And that will allow us to further own the position and the ability to go in and out of these joint actions. A way we can do that is a goblet squat variation with a ball between the knees to a 90 degree box. We're constraining the body into a position here where we are biasing internal rotation of the pelvis at the bottom position. So we're going to add a little pause at the bottom of this position to help bias more internal rotation of the hips.
So to start here, we want to get on some wedges, but you could also just use five pound plates and put your heels on them. And you want somewhere around an inch to two inches of elevation, whatever is going to help you stay stacked, meaning that your rib cage is directly over your pelvis. You can maintain a slight pelvic tilt. So key, go ahead and hold that squat or sorry, that weight right there in a goblet squat position. And then what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you inhale the top through your nose. Good, exhale, squat down, letting those knees come forward. Good, light tap, hover right there for an inhale. Exhale, come up. The ball in between the knees is essentially just serving as a reference for you to keep your knees in line with your toes, but also provide a little bit of a bias towards that backside opening a little bit, especially as we get to 90 degrees. You can also do a deadlift variation like so, but this requires a little bit more control over the ability to open up that space. You can try this right here. 